Hey, and welcome back to another Coffee with Vixen. Today is May 15th, 2013. And I've got all kinds of amazing stuff to talk to, talk to you guys about today. Uh, for those wondering what type of coffee I'm drinking today, Duncan Turbo. We all know I could use the extra energy boost. Um, <clears throat> so today in the news... We have Angelina Jolie's breasts and the public ownership of body parts. <clears throat> um, apparently, Angelina Jolie found out that she has the gene that predisposes her to actually having breast cancer and ovarian cancer. So she elected to go ahead and have a double mastectomy, which is the surgical removal of both of her breasts. Um, and, of course, you know, with today's internet thing, there there's trolls, there's people who are just flat-out obnoxious, whatever. But, um... It seemed, it seems to me that the most, the most people criticizing her happen to actually be men who uh, are apparently fans of her breasts and weren't very happy about them being surgically removed. Um, this is just, this is a mess, is what this is. Um... Anyway, I'm not even going to like linger on that too much. Uh, Brian Fisher apparently won't answer uh, any questions about his own gay impulses. Brian Fisher, if you guys don't know, is one of the people who speaks on behalf of um, the American Family Association, um, a very anti-gay group. Um, they're constantly fighting in various different states to keep... <clears throat> people who are homosexual in nature uh, from actually having the legal right to get married, claiming that it that marriage is a religious institution. Um, so uh, that's a whole nother story though. Um, anyway, that was from uh, the David Pakman show. You guys should definitely go and watch the, uh, the clip on YouTube for that. That was actually kind of funny. The guy got a little defensive. Um, speaking of homosexuality uh, from Right Wing Watch, apparently there's some ex-gay activists that are going around uh, claiming that gay activists try to indoctrinate kids and stuff, and they're trying to, as they quote, uh, say, protect against sexual predators. Um, Anyway, the whole thing says uh, that the ex-gay activist Christopher Doyle actually talked to Sandy Rios of the American Family Association this week, where he made the outlandish claim that if ex-gay counseling is restricted, then youth who have uh, been sexually abused will never report the harm done to them, and more Jerry Sanduskies will get off scot-free. Um, I'm... I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not touching this any further than that with a ten with a ten foot pole. Uh, these people drive me absolutely insane um, with some of the stuff that they come up with. <sighs> Moving right along, some good news. Main uh, Main's panel actually endorsed labeling for genetically modified food um, with an eight to four vote, which moves Maine farther into the national debate over genetically modified food and it also unfortunately moves them closer to messing with uh, agribusiness and biotech giants like Monsanto um, which if any of you guys have been following anything on Monsanto Monsanto has actually threatened to sue states in the past for the whole concept of labeling legislation um, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to be eating GMO foods. Um, they produce a lower crop. It's been scientifically linked repeatedly to um, various different things from leukemia to other types of cancer. Um, yeah, no, I, I want my food labeled. I, I wish Delaware would pass laws like this because the, the whole concept of GMOs is getting a little weird these days. Um, from Scientific America, and you guys know, if, if you don't know by now, I love the science aspect of things. Um, from Scientific American, 
uh, this is actually an article on why rituals work. Apparently, um, over time, archaeologists and anthropologists have studied uh, various different rituals from various different cultures, and now psychologists are getting in on it. And they're actually finding that it can actually, it can take the, by doing these different various rituals, it can actually reduce the feeling of stress. It can um, help you through grieving processes and things along those lines. Um, and the article really does go in uh, more in depth. It's a three page article and I definitely highly recommend you guys to, to uh, take a look at it. It's very interesting. Um, <clears throat> and kind of actually lends a little um, a little scientific leeway into people who practice various different rituals uh, as religious practices um, or in their religious practices rather such as people who practice various forms of paganism uh, like myself. Um, <clears throat> a little bit of sad news, Amazon tribe apparently is facing extinction due to illegal logging while Bra the Brazilian government actually just kind of stands by and lets it happen. Um, some food safety issues are going on. Uh, tests have now shown that most store honey isn't actually honey at all and uh, without pollen being in the honey there's no actual way to really tell if it's coming from a safe place or not. Um, I don't know when the last time you guys went to a Dollar Tree was but they actually have honey flavored syrup which is not honey. Um, and I guess some, there's some companies out there that uh, that are like so gone overboard with this that it's it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um, there is there is one thing that the uh, the the FDA has actually pointed out. It says that any product that's been ultra filtered and no longer contains poly. Uh, pollen it isn't honey however the FDA isn't checking honey sold here to see if it actually contains pollen Ooh, what a joy um, these are actually I guess the tests are being done by uh, independent independent contractors and things um, definitely worth checking out though uh, big props to a libertarian in New Jersey he's running for Senate candidate and decided to go ahead and smoke pot in park. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, when he was asked who is this for, he responded with, this is for all my brothers and sisters who are currently being held prisoners for um, uh, of the war by our government as a result of the war on drugs. Um, Dizarn, who's 46 and running on the libertarian ticket, is actually calling uh, called it a public statement for marijuana legalization and no police thankfully were in the area to uh, arrest him. Um, his whole thing that he's trying to run for his, his platform um, is <clears throat> regulating and taxing cannabis um, as well as cutting property taxes and increasing government transparency. This is actually these three things are pretty common with libertarians. Um, so that's that's not too bad. I, I really am rooting for this guy. I want to see what he can do. Although I'm not in New Jersey, so it's not really going to affect me all that much. Um, <clears throat> moving along. In uh, the mystery of the giant planet hidden in our solar system. This was actually quite interesting. And I don't, I don't know quite, quite where to begin. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, according to uh, two particular scientists, uh, John Matisse and Daniel Whitmire from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, uh, they're saying that there is a really big planet, a colossus planet, uh, that is hiding in the Oort cloud, the asteroid beehive that actually forms kind of like an outer shell um, of our actual home solar system. Um, 
<clears throat> anyway, they claim that the data captured by uh, NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer proves is, its existence. Now it just needs to be analyzed over the next two years. Uh, very interesting, though. Um, and they're, they're calling the planet Tyke, I, I do believe is how it's uh, pronounced. It's T-Y-C-H-E. Uh, and this, I guess, would be the ninth planet, again, of our solar system. Since uh, they decided to remove Pluto and call it a planetoid. Um, moving along, I don't know if you guys have actually seen this or not. I, I know I've seen it recently, uh, Fox News in particular. Um, <clears throat> I overheard something on the TV and I, I walked out and bam, there's Fox News on the TV. But they were going on about how apparently there's some big scandal with the whole Benghazi thing and this, that, and the other, and that there's some new leaked evidence. Um, this article is from yesterday and the actual link to the real email is in the article. Uh, you guys should definitely go and take a look at that. But this one here confused the hell out of me. Um, mainly because, I, I, I mean, I understand that Fox News doesn't, like, get its facts straight and legally is allowed to lie to us and all that good stuff. The Supreme Court case, the whole nine yards with that. But, I mean, this, this leaked email was obviously doctored and people just grabbed it and ran with it like there was no fact checking nothing and this is this is why I can't stand Fox News and I can't stand most mainstream media because of this particular fact um, they just grab hold of the first thing that they think is a good story and run with it and then once they find out oh well bad fact checking oh they, they don't even apologize for it it's like yeah we gave you bad news oh well it drives me nuts. Um, anyway, it seems like the more Republicans in particular um, <clears throat> try to discredit the president, the more information pops up that like debunks all the weird crap that's coming out of their mouths. Uh, this particular one, um, actually, this but this particular scoop came from ABC. Uh, <laughs> And uh, when it be, this is this is a direct quote from Jonathan Carl from ABC. Uh, when it became clear last fall that the CIA's now discredited Benghazi talking points were flawed, the White House said repeatedly the documents were put together almost entirely by the intelligence community. But White House documents reviewed by Congress suggest a different story. And the article was released with the title, Exclusive Benghazi Talking Points Underwent 12 Revisions Scrubbed of Terror Reference. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like, like I said, unfortunately for him, the email text that, um, that was released was doctored. So the source of the doctoring is still not known. But the email text that he reported, uh, reported on is, is the following, and I'll, I'll, I'll quote this for you. Uh, we must make sure that the talking points reflect all agency equities, including those of the State Department, and we don't want to undermine the FBI investigation. We thus will work through the talking points tomorrow during uh, t tomorrow morning at the Deputies Committee meeting. Um, <laughs> the actual text said, uh, without the doctoring, Sorry to be late to this discussion. We need to resolve this in a way that respects all of the relevant equities, particularly the investigation. There is a ton of wrong information getting out into the public domain from Congress and people who are not particularly informed. Insofar as we have firmed up assessments that don't compromise intel or the investigation, we need to have the capability to correct the record as there are significant policy and messaging ramifications that would follow from a, a hardened misimpression. Uh, we can take this up tomorrow morning at deputies. That was the actual email. And it's 
th this is just getting to the point now where it's the, the that, that back and forth crap and it's it's a distraction they want you to be looking over here while the hand over here is doing something else and there unfortunately some people sit there and go oh my god my president lied to us hey guess what every president has lied to us get over it it's part of the freaking government that we have now <clears throat> and this is why I say people are fully capable of governing themselves and that we don't need any kind of federal government or state government anyway um, next up in my queue of craziness um, boys to shower with girls in California public schools oh no we go into the whole I, I feel, I, I'm, physically I'm a girl, but I, I feel that I'm a boy and I haven't had the opportunity to have a sex change and this, that, and the other. Now I can see where there's a, um, I can see where there could be a very serious issue here. Um, but you know what, there's a lot of, uh, this, this is that point where we have to start actually thinking, okay, we need to educate students more. I mean, if, if, the wor if, if the worst thing that you're worried about is uh, co-ed showering, if, if that is what terrifies you and not the fact that, oh, you know, you're, the food that you're eating is over-processed and killing you, um, or the fact that the government not only lies to you, but very, it is in the pocket of the larger corporations, if, that, if, if this is what bothers you the most over that, there is a serious problem and you should really reevaluate your priorities. <sighs> anyway, apparently um, the California Assembly, which is the equivalent to the House of Representatives in most states, uh, passed Assembly Bill 1266 by 46 to 25 vote, um, which essentially, I, I guess, it, it was all Democrats that voted. Uh, Republicans either didn't didn't vote or abstained from voting. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the the bill states that public schools cannot discriminate in any way concerning the sex of the student. Both sexes are to have equal access to all offered courses, counseling, and athletics. Any student can try out for any sport regardless of their sex. Um, and then it goes on to say, but the kicker in this statement contained in the bill. Um, <clears throat> this is what it actually says. And uh, section 221.5 five of the education code is amended to read a pupil shall be permitted to participate in sex segregated school programs and facilities including athletic teams and competitions and use uh, use facilities consistent with his or her gender identity irrespective of the gender listed on the pupil's records so basically, in other words, any boy who claims he's a girl, even though he is anatomically still a boy, would be allowed to use the same locker rooms and shower that the girls use. On the opposite side, it works for girls too. If a girl feels that they're a boy, but still anatomically a girl, they would actually be allowed to shower with the boys. Now this is this here is the part where like I can see people faking just to go over and oh he 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 I, I, you know I lied to him blah 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 and, like I mean there's there's a lot of issues that I can see with that but at the same time I also see where a large portion of that could actually be beneficial and as far as I'm concerned I say make everything co-ed and there's nothing you know and educate the students together and it, this this won't be a problem and make sure that there's somebody watching over them I mean, it's really not that hard. Um, this was uh, kind of disturbing. Uh, Syrian rebel apparently ate the heart of a regime soldier, and the whole con, the the, the whole thing is basically that um, if the international media has just discovered this now, then they're coming in way too late. Um, and that was from the minister for. Uh, reconciliation 
and basically this whole thing is uh, what they're what what the media is dubbing as an instant propaganda victory to the Syrian government, which accused the West of ignoring rebel atrocities. Um, oh my God, this this is absolutely just. Uh, uh, this goes right along with the Angelina and jo Jolie thing. Total mess. And you guys can go and read this. I'm not messing with that anymore. <clears throat> but that's because I want to talk about the Swaziland, uh, which actually made it illegal for a witch to fly on a broomstick above 150 meters. Um, <laughs> this is actually from Monday. Uh... And I'm just now catching wind of it. And it's it's actually very interesting. Um, a witch on a broomstick should not fly above the 150 meter limit. And that's according to the Civil A Aviation Authority uh, Marketing and Corporate Affairs Director. And um, no penalties exist for witches flying below... 150 meters. There's actually a, a very hefty fine if you fly over that 150 meter limit on your broomstick. Uh, <laughs> I, I love this. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think this is a joke, but in Swaziland, where people actually really do believe that witches fly on broomsticks, um, <laughs> they, they had to kind of implement this kind of thing. And just wow. <laughs> But the thing is, though, and, and to be fair, here's the thing. The statute actually also forbids toy helicopters and children's kites from ascending too high into the country's airspace. Um, <clears throat> apparently, they also had arrested a private detective who was operating a toy helicopter, which was equipped with a video camera. And the dude boasted about using it to gather surveillance information. So, I mean, I can actually, I can really see where something like this would actually take place. Like, this is straight legit. And it, unfortunately, it, it sounds stupid, but to, to the people of this culture uh, of Swaziland, it, it's just, it, it's, it, it's something that's very serious to them. As a practicing witch, no, I don't fly on a broomstick, but, um, who's to say that maybe, maybe there is a Swazi part of older woman, younger woman, middle-aged woman, who knows, flying around on a broomstick, or maybe it's some prank that people are playing on these poor people, who knows, you know, um, Anyway, I, uh, before I wrap everything up into a nice little neat package, I would like to give a big shout out to the Church of Pagan Freedoms. This is a, a relatively new church that has popped into existence. They are a legitimate church. All faiths are welcome. And I've actually been working with um, a few of the people that uh, founded the church and are elders of the church. And they're, they're very nice people. Um, very interesting people to talk to. And of course, you know, I'll drop a link down below for you guys to go and check out their, uh, their website. <clears throat> In the meantime, I have a few of my friends that um, actually have two trailers up right now and are trying to actually win uh, the $50,000 grand prize uh, from Pixeter. And of course, you guys, you know, if you, if you, you guys got to go vote uh, if, if you want, but you can also upload your own videos that you've done with your friends to actually make a full-length movie, and that's what me and my friends have been doing. Um, the first one is J.D. and Bento's Strange Yet Satisfying Journey to Denny's. Actually, a very interesting, um, very interesting thing there. <laughs> And the other one is State of Disillusion. Uh, State of Disillusion is actually by far my favorite one uh, that I've, I've helped out with. And I guess what, what's more terrifying of the whole thing is that 
state of disillusion is actually something that that you could actually foresee happening or you you can find in the news um, even though this is a completely original idea it's still not that far out of the the scope of, of possibilities of things um, also want to give a shout out to uh, conversations while high uh, <laughs> Anyway, Conversations While High is actually um, recorded and produced by a buddy of mine who actually makes the intro music to my show. Um, and I, I have to give him a shout out because not only has he done two video trailers now uh, for Pixeater, but he does Conversations While High, JD's Kitchen, and uh, just all kinds of crazy different things. Um, definitely go and check him out. Not only am I going to put an annotation somewhere over here um, <clears throat> for his stuff, but uh, I'll, I'll make sure to drop a link in uh, the description for you guys, too. Um, Conversations While High is basically a bunch of potheads sitting around getting high talking about various things that are actually important and impact um, people as a whole. Uh, in particular, uh, the, the newest one is uh, the Bill of Rights. And we come up with a conclusion at the very end. Uh, it, it, it's a lot of fun. JD's Kitchen gives you ideas for things that you can do, um, either with cannabis, shrooms, or how to make your own hooch in one particular case. It's actually quite interesting, and it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, to actually work with, to work with JD, he's a very creative individual, and you guys should definitely go and check him out. Plus, his music's not half bad too. So, the guy's actually very, very multi-talented, and it's it, he's an amazing person. Anyway, this wraps up another episode of Coffee with Vixen. You all have a very wonderful day. <laughs>